Good morning, friends. Welcome to the homestead. This one thing is killing homesteading dreams for so many, and it's also killing the American middle class. Let's talk about what that is. Welcome to our greenhouse. This is a great place to have a talk. It's a little bit warmer than it is outside. So what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about debt. And the reason I want to talk about this is because it's killing people's homesteading dreams. They are not taking the steps to leave the city because they're in so much debt and they're afraid they're going to incur more. Friends, if you want to get out on your homesteading journey, get away from the city, you have to control that first. Guys, as Americans, the way that we live is not normal compared to the rest of the world. Part of that's a blessing and part of that's a curse. So part of that's positive and part of that is very negative. The positive part is that we are a very generous culture, a generous people. We give a lot to others all around the world and to our friends in need in this country. We give. But the one really negative aspect is we are so far in debt. I'm talking personal debt. Now this isn't about the government's debt. This is personal debt. This is on you and me. And sadly, we are addicted to it. Let me give you some very insane specific statistics. And one is that U.S. household debt is $18 trillion. That's not the $36 trillion the government owes somebody. That is our debt. Personal household debt. $18 trillion. And the interest rates on that debt are absolutely out of control. 21.8% average for credit cards, 8.8% average for auto loans, and 7% on mortgages. I'm not even talking about student loan debt, which is included in that 18 trillion. I think that interest rate is lower. However, that number is up to 1.6 trillion. As a quick side note, we need to get away from meaningless college degrees just to have a college degree and get back to doing meaningful jobs in the trades. We need electricians like crazy. We need plumbers. I have friends who are master plumbers that cannot find anybody to work. We need mechanics. We need welders. We need all of these jobs to be filled. They are there and waiting for us to fill them. Friends, most people are just one job loss or one interest rate hike on a variable rate account away from total ruin and getting kicked out of their house and being completely devastated. Just one, because we live paycheck to paycheck. There are people making six figures who are living paycheck to paycheck. Why? Because we're addicted to debt. We say, oh yeah, we're the richest country in the world. In, in some aspects we are, but a lot of that wealth is perceived because of personal debt. Just because you have a big boat and a fancy car and a nice house and all of these things inside of the house doesn't mean you're wealthy. It very well could mean you are one job loss away from not having anything. Now, with that said, the average American still is wealthier than almost anybody else in the world. We are still the richest country in the world. Uh, barring a few small countries, I think like Luxembourg and Liechtenstein and probably Monaco, um, small old money countries, but we're still the richest country in the world. But we think we still need all of these things and we're going into debt to do it. We're going to be really poor really fast. Now, I know some people are going to come at me like, you Americans, you don't know what you have and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I do know what I have. I can see like when we go to the Philippines to visit my wife's family, that's a third world country. I know what poor is and seeing what actual poor is. And that is poor. That is scrounging for your next meal day to day. That is living in something called a Nipah hut, which is basically just thin bamboo strip walls. Okay, so I know what it is. Let me tell you a story about what some people here think poor is. I have a friend who's a physical therapist. He used to work in rural Mississippi, helping people who are disabled, you know, get mobility back. He would go to trailer homes, and which is still way more than a Nipah hut in the Philippines, by the way. He would go to trailer homes with a newer 
Camaro, he was telling me about this the other day, a newer Camaro parked in the parking lot, a flat screen, 42, 50 inch uh, LED TV in the house, and new iPhones. And those people were telling him that they are very poor. Well, how did you get that way? Was it making bad financial decisions? Was it being addicted to debt? Was it some other circumstances out of your control, maybe. However, the level of financial understanding and education that these people have is darn near nil. And yes, they do get preyed upon by unscrupulous people as well. The one, like the auto dealers selling them that car or the bank, somebody giving them a loan for that vehicle that they clearly cannot afford. That's predatory lending and that adds on top of people's ignorance to what uh, debt and money is and that it gets people further into debt. So it's twofold, right? It's people preying on people who are not educated enough to understand that they can't afford something and people just wanting, 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 wanting to keep up with the neighbors, to have cool things, even if they can't afford it. That is debt addiction. Almost everyone in this country lives way outside their means. I lived in a developing neighborhood in Washington, DC. I saw people who certainly could not afford to feed themselves, have very expensive clothes on themselves. Now they could have got them from the Goodwill, but that's highly unlikely. Those poor people have been preyed upon as well but that's a completely different story. We all live outside of our means and we need to stop it because our middle class, which is the strongest thing in the world, at one point it was, is starting to disappear and we do not want them to go away forever. That is one of the real strengths of our country. Most Americans are acquiring giant piles of cheap junk that is completely not necessary and unneeded. We all know where this junk is made. We all know that it just piles in and it's on a great deal. Even if it's at, you know, a discount reseller like Burlington or Ross or Marshall's or something like that, just piles and piles and piles of junk. People are renting storage units. Those don't exist in other countries. We rent storage units and pay money for storage units to store our junk that we never ever touch. It has to stop. We all need to stop it. Get rid of the extra stuff. Stop buying the extra stuff. If some of that stuff is worth any money, sell it. Sell it on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, if that still exists, I don't know. Get rid of it now. Take it to a pawn shop. Just get rid of it. Get a little bit of money for it. Put that money toward your debt. Because all of that cheap junk is completely meaningless. And it will not help you attain your homesteading goal. I'm going to end with a few Bible verses. But before I do that, I want to tell a story of a commenter from last week that really rubbed me the wrong way because of his attitude. So I was talking about uh, people having money in the bank for their retirement and that money uh, getting taken by a bank on what's called a bank bail-in um, if it was over $250,000. And this person commented that they had zero sympathy for people who got their money taken by the bank because he didn't have that money. That attitude in this country has to stop. Now I told this man he had communistic thoughts. And maybe that wasn't 100% accurate. Uh, however, it is in a way. Because just because he couldn't have or didn't have, and he told me some story of nobody helped him out when his wife was sick. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But you don't have to wish ill on other people who work insanely hard their whole lives to save money for the retirement and all of a sudden the bank took it away and now they're out on the streets too. I can give an example of my grandparents. My grandma was a housewife. My grandpa was an electrician at a chemical factory in Downriver Detroit. All right. Tough place. Electrician, chemical factory, nasty job. Worked there his entire life, retired from there, saved cash, 
they didn't know really how to invest money except for i think some life insurance policies they had their money in the bank if they would have had a bank bank bail in take their money over 250 grand or whatever however money much money the bank would have taken and they would have had to wait for um, the fdic to reimburse that money that would have completely destroyed them they would have been living on our couch and at that point i think they were probably in the nursing home and then they wouldn't have been able to pay those bills either because it all came from the bank it came from cash that um, generation the world war ii generation my grandpa was in the army uh saved money they stuffed it under the mattress because they didn't trust things right so the person out there who whined about me alluding to the fact that they had communistic tendencies they re need to really rethink their life all right think of other people not just yourself i'm sorry you've had a tough time and i guess nobody's helped you out we are a generous country there are means for people to get help go get help and you need help here too for sympathy for other people just because you don't have that amount doesn't mean there isn't some hardworking family out there who saved every single penny and put it in a bank. That person will probably never see this video, but if any of you regular subscribers of, of mine ever see comments like that, jump in there, be kind, but set them straight. I would certainly appreciate it. So now let me read Psalm 37, 21. The wicked borrows, but does not pay it back. We've kind of heard that a little bit in modern times. But the righteous is generous and gives. So if you save and you're not in debt, you have the ability to give more and to help people out. Let's go to Proverbs 22, 7. This says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. That's King James. But some versions say that uh, the borrower is slave to the money lender. And we all know that that is true. That's truth from God's word. That is truth in life. Okay, and this one will hit especially hard for a lot of people, especially in today's modern culture, right? This is 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if any not provide for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. All right, friends, I want us to all thrive and all be able to realize our homesteading dreams and also to be able to get out of that city and out into a country lifestyle now go check out this video right here which is a video where i talked about how we got ourselves out of debt have a beautiful blessed day see you next time bye